Hi, thanks for joining us. Um, obviously, QPR signed Kenneth Powell recently uh, from Pex Waller. Uh, you'd be forgiven, obviously, for not knowing too much about him, given he's played much of his career in the area of Vizzy. You might not have been able to watch him too much, but I've tracked down someone who does know a little bit more about him and Pex Waller as well. Uh, Matt Murphy is the chairman of Pex Waller UK. Um, thanks for joining me, Matt. Um, just first of all, Kenneth Powell leaving, is that a bit of a blow is there a bit of disappointment among the fan base or was there kind of like an expectation that he was always going to leave and go to another club yeah thanks for having us dan there was this expectation that he was going to leave uh even before uh we got relegated uh at the end of the season we were always expecting uh kenny to go there has been loads of interest from spl clubs some italian clubs and then eventually yourselves we um we didn't know what the circumstances were going to be. We were expecting a fee. So we were really shocked when we found out that we just mutually agreed to tear up his contract so we could have the pathway for a championship football. Mm. Was that a bit disappointing as well then? Because obviously, like you say, if he was getting linked with all these other clubs and it could have potentially benefited the club, you know, I'm sure a club like Peck Zwolle, um, as you've now corrected me before we came on, I've got the correct pronunciation. I was pronouncing it wrong. Um, you know, you probably depend on like player sales, right? So to lose him for nothing is, I guess, a bit of a disappointment. Um, but I suppose they just kind of done him a favour there, didn't they? After you're, you're kind of getting relegated um, to allow him to move on to someone else. But from a club's perspective, I imagine it's a little bit disappointing. Yeah, from a club's perspective, it's, you know, it's very worrying, uh, if I'm honest. So two window, sorry, two summers ago, uh, Gustavo Hamer left to join Coventry and that fee was around about £2 million. And he was a very similar calibre player to uh, Kenneth Powell. Maybe uh, there weren't going to be an agreement on the, the fee. Uh, and also as well with our relegation, he's on fairly big wages for uh, a second division club. It, they just thought because he's been a good servant to us, he's had a loan spell and then he came to join us permanently. Just for his services is a bit of a thank you. We're just going to let him go on his way. Maybe that was the only option uh, and the mm. club just felt it was the right thing to do. But from a fan yeah. point of view, not to get a fee for him um, is, is a bit upsetting. But um, we can just see how he's going to flourish in the championship now. Yeah, it's a very noble thing for the club to do. And you could probably tell by Max's accent. Um, he's from Lancashire and uh, he's actually a Preston fan. So thankfully he didn't hang up the call before we... Um, when we came on as you can see I've got the Blackpool shirt in the background I get a bit of stick from that from some of the QPR fans when we do our uh, when we do our podcast as well but I mean you had a great story about how it all started with um, you know you supporting the club and how it started with the stag do and you had to bet on it you bet on a club and Pex Waller was the club that you bet on and you know now there's a quite a big membership of the um, of the group and everything like that and you try and watch as many games as you can so it's a great story but from um, on Kenneth Parler, what what can kind of QPR expect from him overall? What are like his main strengths? What are his main weaknesses? Obviously, he played left wing back a lot, didn't he, last season? Is he more like an attack minded fullback? Would you say is that what, what uh, would that be a fair description of him? Yeah, that would be a fair description. To me, he's, he's like a Patrice Evra sort of a player with an added bonus of um, a great left foot. So, his free kicks, corners. His, uh, his distribution's fantastic, uh, if, if I'm being entirely honest. And he, he has only scored three goals for Zwolle, but two of them were absolute worldies, if I'm honest. Mm. Um, he's, he's very calm on the ball as well. So he does like to get forward. The only downside of his game, I would say, is, uh, is defending. He just needs to work on that. But going forward, he's a, a great asset to have, especially pushing the team up the pitch if you're a goal behind. Mm. Is he better in that sort of wing-back system then, would you say? is that Does he nearly need to play in a back, obviously three centre-backs and then in that wing-back role to really be effective? Because he played a little bit in a back four, right, from a research sort of done. Was he, did you notice a, a difference when he was in a when he was playing as a wing-back? Was he better, would you say? Yeah, he, he was better as a wing-back uh, for me. Uh, I think... The most of the Zwolle fan base would agree that he was better as a, a wing back. The, he did have a, a, a briefly successful spell when we, we did play a back four and the result our results kind of like stabilised. But on the whole, we, we just missed his 
his presence going forward. So when he played in that back four, I think he felt a, a bit uh, a bit trapped that he had to play in defence. Really, you need to give him that freedom. I think anywhere further up the park, you couldn't play him as a left midfielder, but as yeah. a he's actually kind of ideal as a left wing back. Yeah, because obviously QPR have played um, a three at the back system the last couple of seasons under Mark Warburton, but obviously he's left now and the new man, Michael Beale, has come in and given that he's not managed before, obviously he was quite, he was an assistant under Stephen Gerrard at Rangers and Aston Villa. And uh, so you can kind of learn a little bit about what uh, his style of play was, but it's kind of unknown about whether he's going to continue with that three at the back or play a four, because obviously Rangers and Aston Villa both played a four at the back while he was there. But then again, you know, it was obviously Stephen Gerrard making the final call. So it'd be interesting to see like whether Powell is used in a back four or as a wing back. Um, I mean, do you think like, from what you've seen in him, that he's got the tools to kind of adapt to English football. I mean, from just doing a bit of research, it looked like he was kind of in, not maybe not in and out, that might be a bit too harsh, but he had to, a spell out of the team and then he had a, a good run in the team. He was kind of sharing that left wing back spot, right? I mean, is that like a concern at all? Is it like, do you feel like he can come into English football and that make a difference right away from what you've seen? He can come, yeah, he can adapt to our English game absolutely fine. The reasons why he had a spell out the team was he, he just had a recurring injury that didn't seem to get better. Right. But towards the end, I think with the upheaval of the club and the management not knowing the best team, they, they were just flitting him in and out. But uh, when he had his most consistent run in the team, it was absolutely fantastic. And he had all the qualities uh, to, you know, to progress on. He came through. Um, you know PSV's academy system, and I can tell you now, no, no dummy goes through that PSV academy system. Mm. They always tend to end up playing top or second division Dutch football at the very least, or move on elsewhere internationally. I think uh, with the right coaching team around him, uh, it's, it's obviously they're all very, very experienced in you know, from the championship on upwards, he could actually flourish into a great player and one that could actually, see, in a few years, because he is still young, in a few years still make it to the Premier League. Mm. I'm sure that'll be the hope as well, because, you know, QPR, obviously, don't look like fans don't love seeing players sold, but that's what the club, obviously, their kind of emphasis is on getting these players and developing them. And then, you know, player sales are quite important now with the landscape of the championship. I'm sure you kind of know that as well, you know, player sales are quite important with fair play and everything like that. So I'm sure that will be the hope. Um, but is, is it not fair to kind of, when you look at, obviously, Peck as well, didn't have a great season last season. Um, sorry to bring that up. But uh, obviously relegated and, you know, he was part of that team. I mean, I guess some fans might look at that and be a little bit concerned, but would you kind of shrug that off? Is it a little bit unfair to kind of use that against him? Yeah, definitely. It's not one person that makes a team at the mm. end of the day. We were chatting off camera about the club wanted um, loans. They kept complaining about the financial situation, using COVID a lot as the uh, as one of the main excuses, and not having fans uh, back at the grounds, uh, saying it was financially impacting them massively. If you have a look at that Pexwaller team uh, last season, for me, it would even finish in the bottom half of the second division in Holland. They were that bad. Um, oh, really? Yeah. Uh, and you had only a handful of players, Kenny Paul being one of them, who was an absolute star. So for me, it's unfair to, to you know, put all that burden on uh, on Kenny. Uh, he's been a great uh, servant throughout the years. He had a strong bond with the club, first of all, on loan and then coming in full time. I think people even at the club and even in our, you know, UK organisation following the club, they just want to see him go on to better things. He deserves that. I think the Pegs Waller um, club just need, just need a, a fine break. They need a fresh start with new players. And I also think that Kenny just needs a fresh start. And what a move as well for a fresh start. Queen, Queen's Park Rangers, massive club. And I think with the, you know, the facilities that they've got there, they will make him into a, an absolutely outrageous player, if I'm honest. Yeah, well, that sounds good. I'm sure QPR fans would love to hear that. I mean, they've just moved into a new train. Well, so I say new, it was the academy's training ground, but they've done loads of work on it. 
put loads of investment into her new training facilities. So um, I'm sure that was a big appeal for him as well. Um, but yeah, like you mentioned there, obviously Peck as well have been a bit of a kind of a talent factory over the last few seasons, it seems. I wasn't quite aware of how many players had come from there, but you mentioned Mateus Click uh, at Leeds being one who's obviously a good player. Um, Gustavo Hamer probably being the most kind of eye-catching name at the moment because he's been linked with quite a lot of Premier League clubs and has had a really good season at Coventry. So you kind of look at those two and there's positive signs there, isn't it, um, that players who come from Peck's Waller go on to have quite good careers in English football. They do. Uh, Hamer's say within the next two seasons, I can't see him anywhere other than the Premier League. Mm. He's done very well at Coventry. He's picked up from where he left off at Zwolle. You've got Seth Vandenberg, who uh, won the... Uh, who actually came third in the UEFA Golden Boy Awards uh, a few seasons ago. He joined Liverpool. He's not had a look in. He's been on, a, he's been on loan the, the last season and a half at Preston. He's done magnificently well. Uh, we also had a, a lad called Philippe Sandler, who was uh, knocking on the door of the uh, of the Dutch under twenty ones. He went to Man City, but he hasn't figured. And again, again, you've got like Matthias Galick, who's you know come over here. He's had a, a great career at Leeds. We've been a selling club the past few years, and we absolutely find some diamonds. Unfortunately, the club can't keep hold of those mm. diamonds. Uh, but I am as a obviously somebody. <sighs> English based, I am over the moon to see him over here and just uh, track how they're doing. Yeah, it must be good to be, look forward to watching him. I imagine not now he's over here. I mean, like defensively, obviously, you mentioned like going forward that he's got his talents and that he likes to get forward, but how is he defensively? Obviously, it's going to be quite tough, isn't it, for the championship? You mentioned now, obviously, he was playing in quite a poor team last season to come up to the championship given the schedule, given the competition in that league. Do you feel like it will be quite a big test for him defensively? And how, how do you think he'll hold up on that end? I think the experience that he'll gain from last season will play a massive part because our back four last season we had we've got a 37 year old who's in his I think he's in his 16th to 17th season in the club right. uh, playing alongside him and he, he's you know his legs his legs have have gone and he's quite slow and he was playing with two well the other the other defenders they were putting that back four away or played in the the five or the three five two we were all quite slow he was the only fast outlet so I did right. feel quite sorry for him but the there was a lot on his shoulders last season and I think he can take that into a positive and into playing for QPR I know it might affect him mentally because obviously he was in that negative mindset every week he's just got to treat this as a, a fresh break with a new set of, of players a better set of players if I'm honest and uh, just go from there, just get that telekinetic relationship with the rest of the defence and you'll, you'll you'll see how good he is. Uh, he's good at tracking back on a counter-attack. Uh, I, I have to tell that the amount of last-ditch tackles uh, he put in towards the back end of the season was, was fantastic. Um, his positioning on playing plays on side maybe need to uh, you know be looked at. But I think with the right coaching with, you know, Beal and his team, uh, he'll be absolutely fine. Little things that they need to iron out. But QPR have got a gem on the hands with uh, with Kenny Paul. Yeah, that no, all sounds really positive. I mean, I would you like you say, would you expect it? It's sort of like a bit of a development at the moment still. Obviously, you seem pretty confident that he's going to come in and do well. But does he need a bit of, you know, QPR fans give him a bit of time just to improve on his weaknesses, would you say? Just allow him to kind of adjust to English football and then allow him to kick on from there? Yeah, give him a few months. Personally, I thought Kenny Powell was more uh, tuned up for the championship than Gustavo Hamer, and Hamer just took to the championship like a duck to water. So that fills me with a lot of confidence on on how Kenny Powell's going to do. Just give him a bit of time. It's a he's going to be playing probably in a new system, new teammates, new country, new language. It's all going to be hard for him at the beginning. But I think eventually when the, the dust settles and he, he gets used to his new surroundings and the, the style of play, he'll be absolutely fine. Good stuff. I'm sure QPR fans will be very uh, happy to hear that. Hopefully he's another Pexwaller success story in English football to go with the few that have already come over here and done really well. And um, 
yeah, thanks for that, man. I really appreciate that. And hopefully Pecs will have a bit of a better season next season than the, the one they just had. Thank you, Dan. Really appreciate it.